Creation and peer-reviewed journals. You see, scientists who teach that an intelligent designer created the universe, they're often ridiculed by the evolutionary community. Now, this ridicule comes in many different forms, but one of the most often used tactics of the atheistic community is to claim that creation science is simply not good science. As evidence that creation or intelligent design is not good science, atheistic evolutionists exult in the fact that the standard peer-reviewed scientific journals don't publish papers that support intelligent design. One atheistic scientist put it this way, quote, most telling perhaps is intelligent design's near total failure to make any headway in the peer-reviewed publications that are the gateway to scientific success, end quote. The reasoning here is that if creation or intelligent design were scientific, then it would be included in peer-reviewed journals. But since it's not in peer-reviewed journals, then it must not be scientific. Now, let's look at the problem with this reasoning. The fact is this reasoning is a circular process by which papers are accepted for inclusion in such journals based on the absence of creation in those papers. The scientists in authoritative positions have established their own preconceived definition for science. Such scientists say this, to be scientific in our era is to search for solely natural explanations. Thus, if a paper even hints at something other than a natural explanation, it's rejected as unscientific, regardless of the facts or research that's presented in the paper. Creationist papers aren't rejected from peer-reviewed journals because they're not scientific. They're rejected because they don't give naturalistic explanations. You see, it's clear that the oft-repeated accusation against creation science's lack of peer-reviewed papers is seen for what it is, an intentional exclusion based not on the merits of the paper, but on the agreed-upon but very false definition that true science entails only natural explanations. And the scientific establishment stance is similar to that of a child who forms an exclusive club and one of the stipulations for membership being that all members must be extremely smart. The child then includes in the bylaws that all smart people should think that he, the founding member, is always right. Thus, he concludes that those who don't think he is always right are not smart. And then he proceeds to malign those not in the club based on the idea that they're not smart. And as proof that they're not smart, he says that obviously they're unintelligent because they're not members of his club. Circular reasoning at its finest. In reality, the motivation for castigating those outside his club is simply the fact that they disagree with him, which is the same motivation that propels the evolutionary establishment to reject all creation science articles. You're not going to find articles advocating intelligent design in the majority of peer-reviewed journals, not because the findings aren't scientific, but because they fail to provide evidence and proof of the conclusions as naturalistic. The truth is, many of the best articles ever written never make it into peer-reviewed journals because they mention creation and provide data to support that correct, accurate conclusion. <laughs>